Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at this Jewel Thief circuit that I built in a previous video with an oscilloscope and just kind of see what's going on here and see what kind of uh, measurements I can get with this. Uh, but first off, I'm going to make one little modification to this circuit here. I'm going to take this little ground wire off of the battery and I'm going to add in a 1 ohm resistor between the emitter of the transistor and the battery and what that's going to do is it's going to act as a current shunt if I don't short the battery out with the wire because the magnets are just pulling everything to it but that will act as a current shunt so I can measure current with the oscilloscope and get a look at that so first off I'll show you where I'm going to hook these probes up to and then I'm going to move over to the uh, other camera that's pointed at the oscilloscope since I don't really have any good way of measuring uh, or not measuring but capturing that scope uh, unfortunately but I'm going to hook up the ground clamps onto the ground of the battery and then if I can wrestling all this cable around here to hook this on let's just hook it straight onto the uh, LED right there that'll work and we'll hook up this ground clamp onto the same point which I mean they're hooked up to the same point anyway but I'll just hook it up to the right there for good measure here and hook this one up to the uh, current measurement there and we'll go ahead and go look at the other camera which is on the scope so now that you've seen how that's actually hooked up on there all right so here's what these two waveforms look like uh this top one here the yellow one that is the voltage that the led is seeing and then this one on the bottom is the current that the entire circuit is drawing uh, so go ahead and look at this zoom out a little bit here so you can see that better get a better idea what it's doing uh, but anyway, looking about at 8.5 kilohertz as the switching frequency, and as you can see, this is just uh, pulsing on and off. And this is at 1 volt per division, so that's, uh, let's see, let me put this at a point where that makes sense. So we put that right there, that should be about 1, 2, 3, 4 volts, a little bit over 4 volts. Uh, the RMS voltage, as you can see, is only about 1.4 volts, and that's just because it's off most of the time. Uh, if we go into the measurement menu and we display everything, and I would rather do it to channel 1 here for now, we should see the peak voltage on here somewhere. Uh, where is it at? Voltage peak to peak is 4.2. Okay, Vmax right there, 4.2 volts. That's the uh, maximum amount of voltage that the LED sees is 4.2 volts, which, as you know, or probably know, uh, these LEDs usually you don't want to push them over 3.2 volts, at least not continuously. Uh, but in this case, the circuit is actually delivering up to 4.2 volts, and like I said, your RMS voltage is only like, what, 1.4 uh, or something like that. Yeah, where's RMS at right here? 1.44. And there's all the other stuff here if you want to. You have uh, about 18.6% duty cycle there. If that, at least on the positive duty cycle there. And if I switch this over to channel 2, the RMS current draws about 28 milliamps. And since we're using a one ohm resistor, uh, one millivolt equals one milliamp. Uh, so anyway, and that should be at about the same frequency and whatnot. What's the peak current draw? About 50, about 50 milliamps peak, and at, at its lowest, it actually continues to draw about five milliamps or so there. So if I turn this back off, that's what those two waveforms look like. I'm going to go ahead and move that uh, 1 ohm current shunt resistor so we can get an idea how much current's actually going into the LED. Alright, so we're going to move stuff around a little bit on this. If I can unhook it anyway. Uh, 
I'm gonna move this one ohm resistor over. And I do wish I could have found another one of these one ohm resistors, but I just couldn't find one laying around in the drawer of other resistors. But anyway, I'm gonna wire this up. So now the LED is across that uh, resistor there, and that will give me the amount of current that the LED is taking. All right, so we have the voltage across the LED on this top waveform, and then the current that the LED is drawing uh, on the bottom blue waveform here. And you can see down here we're at about 2 volts per division with the yellow waveform and then that is so it's about it's a little bit over four volts looks like at its peak and actually we can go in here and we can look at this uh, so about 4.24 volts at its very top point which as you'd imagine for a 3.2 volt rated LED that's quite a lot and if you actually go in here and we look at uh, channel 2 uh, you can see that we're pushing about 56 milliamps of current into the LED at its peak. Like I said before, the RMS current is only about 11 millivolts here, which, well, that equates directly into 11 milliamps. And I think the battery voltage is kind of falling off here because this is dropping uh, kind of quickly now. But anyway, uh, that's what the current and voltage waveforms look like, and this is why these dual thief circuits are kind of hard on your LEDs. Uh, most of the time, you're not really supposed to exceed the 20 milliamps or whatever they're rated for. Um, they usually, they are able to handle this, but it's not uh, the greatest thing that you can do to them. But anyhow, this is a fairly standard... Uh, wave format you would expect to get with the Jewel Thief. Uh, the frequency can vary quite a lot. Um, like this one's around 8.5 kilohertz. Uh, and the, actually the frequency is going to vary a decent bit with the voltage of the battery as well, but depending on the uh, number of turns on the inductor and how much inductance you have, as well as the resistor value that you choose for your Jewel Thief, uh, that's actually going to vary the frequency quite a lot. Uh, compared to what you might think it would do and I've had some of these run at 12 kilohertz I've had some of them run at 2 kilohertz um, I haven't tested every single one of these jewel beats that I've made but this one's kind of right in the middle of that 8 kilohertz uh, range there and the amount of voltage that these things will produce will vary as well there is one last thing that I would like to show here which is uh, not the best thing for your transistor but if you completely pull the LED out of the circuit you will create some very high voltage spikes with one of these things here it's kind of jittering around right now because I bumped the wire but there we go that's pretty stable I'm going to unhook the probe that's measuring current actually we'll turn that channel off and then center this one and probably knock the scale down but if I unhook this LED you see that waveform completely changes and actually volts per division is at limit so I'm gonna to have to switch this over to a 10 times probe and we'll change it in this as well so the voltage is correct bring this up a little bit and you see we just have a fairly high voltage spike there that is about 60 volts looks like about 55 volts there at its peak there so that's actually uh, one of the things you can actually do with something like this is you can take it and uh, take that energy run it through a diode and charge up a capacitor with that and actually get a fairly high voltage uh, in a capacitor or something like that instead of dumping it into an LED uh, that's one of the little things you can use to get reasonably high voltage at least uh, Anyway, I think the frequency of this changed as well a little bit. And that, let's see, frequency, yeah, it's about 9.5 kilohertz now without that uh, LED on it. And here's just a little uh, tip for using an oscilloscope for something like this because those things are uh, peaks like that. It's better if you go into uh, peak detect mode with your scope. It just kind of cleans that waveform up and it actually shows you what you want to see. 
Uh, but anyway. That's what the unloaded waveform of Jewel Thief looks like. It's basically just the uh, discharge of an inductor. That's all that is. And we can look at what the current is doing on the output if I switch that resistor back to where it was when we started. Right, let me go ahead and do that. Alright, so I just thought I'd show uh, the current draw that's coming out of the battery at this point without the LED on it. And as you can see, we're still drawing quite a lot of uh, current there. It looks like about 26 milliamps, 27 milliamps coming out of the battery. And it's going to peak up there pretty high probably. Yeah, about 50 milliamps coming out of the battery like that. Um, anyway, it actually kind of looks like it goes negative there as well. Yeah, you have about negative 18 milliamps it looks like being pushed back into the battery, so that's kind of odd, but let me go ahead and stick the LED back on here and we'll do a couple more tests with this. Alright, so that's what it looks like with the LED on there. I'll go ahead and switch this back to being a 1x probe. And you can kind of see the frequency moving around there. It's probably just because connections on this breadboard aren't really that great. Uh, but anyway, that looks somewhat stable. Like I said, the frequency of these things can actually vary quite a bit. But what I want to do now is instead of looking at the current that the LED is drawing, I want to go and... Or not the current that the LED is drawing, but the voltage that the LED is at. I want to look at the supply voltage that's coming in from the battery. So let me go ahead and hook this up over here. And I'm probably going to have to DC couple this, or sorry, AC couple this. Bring this down here. Now that is what the voltage on the battery looks like, which is kind of an odd looking thing. Let me get rid of this menu, please. There we go. It's kind of odd looking, as you can see, it's got some spikes in it there. Let's actually go ahead and go into that measurement menu here and turn that uh, display all thing on. Uh, so the maximum voltage there is 200 millivolts. So uh, that's just a little bit of ripple. Now that right there should be right when that transistor switches off. And I keep trying to turn that off with the menu on off button, it doesn't work. And yes, that is uh, right when the transistor turns itself off, that's where that big spike right there is at because that's like uh, a little bit of energy getting back fed into the battery from the, uh, uh, from that inductor. And you can see here, these are basically uh, inverted from each other. Uh, you have the current rises and the voltage falls, which makes sense, of course, because you pull more current out of, out of a battery like this and the uh, voltage of the battery will drop. Uh, so anyway, that's pretty sensible. Uh, I'm not real sure how much is left in this battery. DC coupling, and that's going to go way off the screen. So let's go back into here and put this in here somewhere. It might actually trigger off of that a little bit. Um, display all. RMS voltage of our battery has dropped to about 700 millivolts or 0 0.7 volts. So not a whole lot of energy left in that battery, and it does look like the LED is starting to get a little bit dim. Uh, but it's not really doing too bad. Okay, so one more thing I want to show is if I move this clip back onto the LED. So now we're probing the voltage across the LED on this yellow waveform, and we have the current that the Jewel Thief as a whole is taking on this blue waveform. I just kind of want to show you uh, how this stuff lines up. If we uh, bring this up a little bit, there's a lot of noise on that signal, I don't know why, but anyway, as you can see, the current ramps up here as the voltage of the LED is actually uh, zero. And right when that current stops, 
and that's when that transistor will switch off. So the transistor turns off, that creates that very high spike or very high voltage spike on the inductor and that actually flows through your LED creating this and then down here that's when the transistor turns back on and the amount of current slowly ramps up until it hits that maximum point and then the transistor shuts off again and the inductor drains its energy into the LED so that's how that works uh, anyway I could move one of these probes over to the base pin of the transistor but that's not going to be all that interesting probably anyway it might not be that's probably going to be a very similar voltage to what's on the uh, yeah that's a very similar waveform to what's on the LED except for it's backward compared to the other one It's uh, it goes negative instead of positive but, uh, So anyway, that's the uh, waveforms that one of these dual thieves make. That's kind of an explanation on how it works. And uh, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, and that's it for now, guys. Bye.